Next comedian's great. You're gonna love him. Please give it up for the very funny Chip Chantry. All right. Uh, so I feel really good about myself. Do you ever do something that just kind of amazes yourself? You're just like, oh my god, I can't believe I just did that. Uh, I, I, I cut myself the other day. I needed a band aid, so I went to the bathroom. I got a band aid and I put it on, and then uh, I threw away the wrapper in the trash can in the bathroom, and I realized uh, that all three of the pieces from the wrapper landed directly in the trash can. <laughs> like I'm some kind of Jedi. <laughs> that never happens, ever. Like there, there's always that one piece that always like helicopters down like behind the toilet. And you're like, well that's just gonna be there forever now. <laughs> the next tenant's gonna deal with that. Not the other day, that was feeling good. I, uh, it was good to have that feeling though, because I started the week off rough. Uh, the other day I had to go to a funeral. And, and you know what they say about funerals, right? Always the pallbearer, right? And, uh... <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you this, I had to get some batteries the other day. I'm not gonna tell you why, but, um... I needed some batteries, and there was a Radio Shack right by me, so I went into the Radio Shack, and, uh, Radio Shack is the most depressing place on the face of the planet, because nobody ever goes in there anymore. It's just so old and outdated, I feel so bad. If, if you haven't been in one recently, basically a Radio Shack is what would happen if your dad and your uncle tried to build an Apple store. <laughs> a Radio Shack is what would come out the other end of that situation. Your dad be all proud, he's like, pretty nice Apple store, right? We got wires and transistor radios and a remote control helicopter that will never ever fly. But I was afraid though, there was this big tough guy standing outside the Radio Shack and he looked like he was trouble. And I, like, I don't want any trouble and I could tell he was a tough guy. I could tell he was really tough, like he's seen some action because he had a tattoo uh, of a son. You know those old timey sons that are like orange and yellow and got a face on them? He had that tattooed on his elbow. And you guys know what that means, right? That means he murdered somebody at a Dave Matthews concert. That's what that means. <laughs> but I don't want to fight. Like, I'm not a fighter. I can't fight. Like, my fighting style could be described as mixed liberal arts. Like, that's pretty much... <laughs> I'm not good with women, either. I, I don't understand women. Women, to me, are like blood. I don't know my exact type, but I know it's negative. I know that, I know. <laughs> I'm not confident in my sexual prowess at all. Um, and guys usually like to brag about what they're like in bed, which is weird to me. I don't get that. Guys always seem to compare themselves to an animal in bed. They're like, I'm like a tiger in bed. I'm a stud. I'm a stallion. <laughs> Ladies, I'm going to be honest with you right now. I'm not going to compare myself to an animal. When I'm in bed, I'm more like... A migrant worker. <laughs> because I'm not very big, and most of the time I don't understand exactly what's happening. <laughs> but I will work my ass off until the job is done. And then I will take a siesta. I much need a siesta, ladies, because I'm sleepy. Knock me out. <laughs> I'd like to do an impression now, ladies and gentlemen, an impression. This is my impression of a magician who had to get a side job as a coroner. A magician who had to get a side job as a coroner. Here we go. Is this your son? All right, so that one, uh... <laughs> I like that joke because that joke kind of decides like who's with me and who's not. Like that's the fun part of that. Yeah. I'll tell you this. I uh, you guys are a nice crowd though, and, and we really appreciate when you get a nice crowd because crowds are. It, it, when it comes to stand up comedy, you guys are just as important as we are. There's a give and take, and, and like if I'm a musician, I could just be playing here. You guys should be talking and not really paying attention. It's fine. But like as a comedian, you, you guys came, you guys sat down as an audience, you, you got your tickets, you, you ordered drinks, you're listening, you're sitting in the dark, you're focused, you're ready to embrace comedy. You're accepting comedy in your hearts. And we really appreciate that when that happens. Because it doesn't always happen that way. Uh, this happened to me a couple weeks ago. I was doing a show up in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And I don't know if you guys have been to Bethlehem. Uh, it's like they have the quaintest little 
meth labs up there. They're amazing. They're beautiful this time of year. But uh, they actually have a really nice uh, performing arts center up there. It's called the ArtsQuest Center, and they have like these big theaters and these little theaters all in the same complex. And I was I was headlining a comedy show in the big theater that in the little theater that night. And in the big theater that night uh, was Dennis DeYoung, the lead singer from the band Styx from the '70s, like Come Sail Away and all that. He was in the big room. I was in the little room that night. But Dennis DeYoung had to cancel the day of because he got sick. He wasn't feeling well. So they canceled the show, but a lot of Styx fans still kept showing up because they didn't realize that's what happened. So they kept showing up, so they had to turn them away. But instead of just like turning them away, they were like, well, the show's canceled. But instead, you could go see comedian Chip Chantry. <laughs> no, they can't. <laughs> it's a terrible idea for comedy. You can't do that. You can't be like, you can't see your favorite band tonight, but instead you can go see comedian Chip Chandra. It doesn't work. Because like they just hated me. Half the room I was performing for was just angry Sticks fans. They're just sitting there with their arms folded. Like half of them hated me, the other half were like, when's he gonna do Mr. Roboto? Like they didn't know. They were just pilled out and sad and confused. But you can't do that in comedy. It doesn't work that way. You can't be like, can't see your favorite band, go see a comedian. You can't do that. It's kind of like this. Imagine this. Let's say your favorite food in the world is crab cakes. You love crab cakes. It's your favorite food. You love it. You have a favorite restaurant that makes the best crab cakes in the world. So you decide, all right, this Friday night, I'm going to go into my favorite restaurant. I'm going to get the best crab cakes in the world. And all week, you're just thinking crab cakes, crab cakes, crab cakes. And the only thing getting through your crappy job and your crappy life and your cr yeah, everything is just crab cakes, crab cakes, crab cakes. And your wife's annoying. And your kids are just dicks. And you're just, you're just like crab cakes. Crab like the only thing keeping you from slipping the noose on and kicking out the chair is just crab cakes, crab cakes, crab cakes. So finally, Friday night rolls around, you get all excited, you go down to the restaurant, you wait in line for like an hour, you finally get seated, the waiter gives you your menus, and you're like, oh, the crab cakes, please. And he's like, oh, I'm really sorry, sir, we're all out of the crab cakes. But instead, you could go see comedian Chip Chantry. <laughs> That's what they like. My name is comedian Chip Chantry. Thank you guys. Very much. Comedian Chip Chantry.